went to look at the uh, proposed new GTLD process. Uh, I was sent to a page with uh, a long PDF with a 26 step chart uh, through which applicants uh, and applications would go. Uh, I tried to print this out, but unfortunately I ended up with one page with a black smudge down the center as uh, my computer tried to shrink this to fit uh, one page. Uh, printed on multiple pages so as to be readable without a microscope. I think I would had to bring a stack of paper that might have exceeded the weight limit on my uh, flight over here. Uh, the problem is that this is a, a thick process that's being developed where uh, applicants for a, a new GTLD string uh, have to go through uh, multiple steps of vetting uh, and opposition, uh, including the possible opposition uh, uh, it's policy recommendation six, strings must not be contrary to generally accepted legal norms uh, relating to morality and public order, uh, enforceable under generally accepted and internationally recognized principles of law. Uh, the problems are, uh, A, that there is no such uh, internationally recognized principle uh, uniformly to be found, uh, and B, that even were there such a principle, the costs of finding it out and of determining whether uh, your proposed string uh, met or did not meet uh, those criteria would be prohibitive. So what we have is a thick process, and not just uh, thick in number of pages it would take to print it out, uh, but thick in the costs of engaging with it. Uh, it's a process that's open to uh, the, the heckler's veto, a competitor who sees competitive advantage to keeping your string out, uh, will always be able to dream up uh, some objection uh, under uh, claims of infringement or claims of uh, morality. Uh, and so that thick process uh, creates disincentives to innovation and uh, creative uses of domain name space. Uh, so instead of this uh, thick process, uh, I would much prefer to see a uh, thin process uh, or borrowing terms that uh, David Eisenberg has used to talk about the network uh, itself, a stupid process, a thin process, a very lightweight process, a process that could be as stupid as uh, compare string to string already in the database. If string is not found, add new string to the database. Uh, lightweight, easy to implement, inexpensive, uh, doesn't raise these uh, barriers to innovative use. Uh, and this has worked very well for the network itself. After all, the internet, uh, the reason we're all here, uh, is just such a stupid network uh, as uh, David Eisenberg and others have described the network doesn't uh, care what kind of content you're using uh, there. It doesn't care what kind of, whether the network itself doesn't care whether your uh, content infringes, whether your content is immoral by somebody's definition, uh, whether your content is valuable or valueless, whether your content uh, or your application uh, is useful or useless. Uh, whether it's good or bad, cheap or expensive. Instead, it lets uh, the end users, the people at the edges of the network, uh, decide those things for themselves. Uh, and it, it lets governments at the edges of the network regulate what will be permitted on their particular piece of network. Uh, so governments engage in filtering regimes. And <coughs> some of us may like that and some of us may dislike that, but. Uh, if a government has decided that uh, certain content is impermissible within their segment of uh, jurisdiction on their territory, uh, they can attempt to block that locally. Uh, and if another government has a different, more expansive view of what's permissible, uh, they can permit that. Yeah. They, the stupidity of the, the network uh, has permitted the flourishing of independent creativity, of unanticipated
created content and applications. Uh, the designers of the network didn't have to know that people would start using it for voiceover, internet telephony, or for video, or podcasts, or audio, uh, or weblogs, or RSS, or any of the new kinds of uh, content uh, and services and applications uh, available. Keeping the network thin allows people to add any of those services uh, on top of it. So uh, moving back to uh, GTLDs, some people think that new TLDs will help with uh, the development of new kinds of content or new applications uh, or new kinds of services. Uh, some people have ideas for businesses that they could build around new kinds of uh, content or applications or services. Uh, we've heard from some of them uh, using domain name service for uh, things other than just resolving to uh, internet locations, the .tel uh, proposal to use uh, DNS as a storage uh, location for, for contact information, uh, or the .post or .mobi uh, uh, domain proposals. We hear uh, new T TLD proposals for particular community, particular language, particular uh, application uh, content, and some of those may be great ideas and some of them may be terrible ideas, but there's no reason we should be uh, determining in advance uh, which of those uh, are going to be good or bad, successful or unsuccessful, useful or useless. Uh, if we have a thin process in place, we can allow people to try them, see what's valuable, uh, and add that value to the network for those who find it valuable. Uh, the consequences of doing otherwise, of putting these restrictions into the uh, new TLD process, um, are not only a slow, expensive, uh, easily vetoed uh, process, uh, but also a race to the bottom in terms of what expression is permissible. Uh, every time we try to harmonize uh, the permitted strings uh, by various local moralities and various local uh, trademark uh, juris rules, uh, we end up with less and less that's permitted. Uh, and uh, just as if we allow every, every uh, individual who has a complaint to uh, to veto the process, uh, if we allow every government uh, that has a complaint about uh, particular strings uh, to veto them, uh, we end up with a very small pool of uh, interesting ideas uh, from which to draw. Uh, I see some of this, uh, the, the variety of uh, of international law on expression uh, through the Chilling Effects Project, a project that, uh, that I run at chillingeffects.org where we collect uh, complaints about online content and requests that have been made to various providers of content uh, for the removal of that material. Uh, one of the sources of complaints uh, that we receive in, in our database uh, is Google. Uh, the internationally available search engine uh, that, uh, as I'm sure I don't need to explain to anyone in this room, uh, will provide you with uh, responses to any search query you, uh, you type into it in nearly any jurisdiction uh, in the world. Uh, now Google gets complaints from people about material that's made available through the uh, search engine. And depending on uh, the jurisdiction of the complaint and the jurisdiction of the complainer and the jurisdiction of the Google servers responding to those complaints, uh, Google may or may not remove the, uh, the material uh, that's being complained about. And so if you're in the United States uh, and you make a request to Google to remove material that you claim infringes copyright, uh, Google will remove that link from its search engine. Uh, but uh, 
If you make a complaint to Google that a link returned in a search query uh, defames you, uh, and you're in the United States, Google will not remove that link. Uh, because United States law says that uh, an intermediary won't be liable for uh, the defamation that uh, some third party user uh, has made accessible through it. Uh, and so in the US, you have one view uh, of the internet that gives you access to uh, quite a lot of material. Uh, if you're defamed, uh, your response has to be either to go after the person who's defamed you or to post your response uh, to be found equally by the search engine. Uh, by contrast, if you're in France and you make a complaint that you've been defamed uh, there, uh, Google will respond to that by removing the, uh, the complaint of page. Uh, and so we, we see complaint uh, enforceable in various jurisdictions, uh, not just of defamation or copyright, but of publicity rights, of hate speech, uh, complaints uh, of sexual content, of obscene content, where the definition of obscenity varies widely uh, from country to country. Uh, some countries have, have laws against uh, incitement uh, of varying kinds. Some countries ban particular political parties or particular uh, opinions about political parties or about uh, historical events. Some countries ban Holocaust denial. Some countries ban religious uh, content. Some countries uh, ban uh, various kinds of propaganda. Some countries ban material based on uh, competition policy or trademark policy. Uh, and so each country uh, with this stupid network layer in the middle gets to set its own policy about what will be permissible there. Uh, and if you do a Google search from France, you will see different uh, results returned uh, from what you see uh, doing a Google search from the United States. Uh, and the internet hasn't broken uh, as a result of that. Each country gets to, uh, to set its own laws and policies. And uh, eventually, perhaps, they may harmonize, and, but uh, but the, the, the disharmony hasn't, uh, hasn't caused uh, terrible problems. Um, by contrast, if we try to you know, respond to all of those concerns at the, uh, the level of pre-approval, uh, new uh, domain strings, we would have to engage with every one of those different uh, complaints, uh, even the complaints of countries that don't permit uh, human rights advocacy uh, online. Uh, so the stupid network uh, runs on sort of uh, at the network level, uh, runs on abundant infrastructure, uh, an underspecification of what might go on uh, over the network, um, and uh, interoperability, uh, Eisenberg tells us. And uh, that has allowed us here and elsewhere to figure out what sorts of things we want to plug into it. Uh, I think a, a stupid policy for uh, addition of new strings uh, to the root, uh, making it cheap, uh, telling in advance very little about what's required, uh, and uh, making it easy to interoperate and to, uh, to build upon uh, that layer uh, will similarly allow us to uh, experiment, find new and valuable uh, uses for the domain name system, uh, and new and valuable uses for the internet uh, in ways that enhance all of our freedom.